Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that exposes Pakistan's role and nexus in promoting global terrorism and its funding. Here are the headlines. Pakistan-backed militants unleash series of attacks in Kashmir. Taliban rejects Afghan president's true call. U.S. expresses concern as terrorists continue to enjoy safe haven in Pakistan. Gangster Daud Ibrahim's close aide arrested in London. The Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir saw a series of violent attacks on its security forces as Pakistan-backed militants went on a killing spree that resulted in the deaths of three policemen. They even went on to kill a worker of a political party. Newsweek South Asia has a report. Pakistan, known for training and sponsoring terrorism in India and also sending over terrorists across the border to create havoc in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, spread more violence in the state. Recently, a militant was killed in an ongoing encounter which started in South Kashmir's Anantnag district during a cordon and search operation. The troops became aware of the presence of four militants in the area and soon a gun battle ensued between the two sides. The search for the other three militants is underway. Each celebration in the state saw deaths of three security personnel, all hailing from Jammu and Kashmir police. The victims have been identified as Sub-Inspector Mohammad Ashraf Dar, Fayaz Ahmed Shah, an under-training police constable and Mohammad Yaqub, a special police officer. As per reports, Fayaz Ahmed Shah was shot dead at close range in Kulgam, where he had gone to offer prayers. On the other hand, Yaqub, who was recently promoted as a constable, was shot outside his home in Pulwama area. Basically, if you look at it, this is the new ideology of terrorism, which is being foisted on Kashmiri young. Uh, an ideology which sanctions killing on days like Eid, on Ramzan, you know what happened to Shujaat Bukhari, uh, which is completely not done under strict Islamic laws. The militants then went on to kidnap, torture and then kill a BJP worker in Pulwama district. 26-year-old Shabir Ahmed Bhatt was abducted while returning home after celebrating Eid. His bullet-ridden body was found in the fields of Rak A Litter area. Reacting to it, BJP chief Amit Shah said the cycle of violence won't last long. Shabir Ahmed ko BJP worker ko unhone Pulwama mein goli maar di hai. Wo khatam ho gaye hain, swargwas ho gaye hain. To ye jo baat hai, ye baat samajh samajhdari ki baat honi chahiye yahan par. यहाँ पे एक आज ईद के दिन को तो कम से कम एक खुशनुमा दिन है उसको तो उन उनको प्यार मोहब्बत के साथ में काम आना चाहिए। Meanwhile, clashes erupted between protesters and security forces in Srinagar during Eid al-Adha celebrations. Radicalized youngsters took to the streets to pelt stones at the security forces. Banners and flags of Pakistan and many other terror outfits were also seen during these protests. The other separatist leaders today don't know what they want to do. So therefore, with no concrete direction, political direction, they are just instruments of Pakistan. So any flag, whether it be ICE or whether it be Pakistani flag, is given to them on the behest of what Pakistan wants. So today it might be an ICE flag, tomorrow it might be uh, a Pakistani flag. The security forces had to disperse the violent crowd by using tear gas shells to restore peace in the area. Muslim separatists have been waging a violent campaign against Indian rule in the state since the late 1980s. New Delhi accuses Pakistan of covertly supporting the long-running separatist insurgency. 
Days after Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani offered truce on the eve of Eid, Pakistan-backed Taliban reciprocated with several attacks in the capital Kabul. We have a report. Several explosions were heard in the diplomatic area of Afghan capital Kabul. The explosions were caused by rockets fired from outside the city and some fell near the presidential palace, around the embassy compounds and government buildings, according to a security official. The terrorists involved were later killed, according to a spokesperson for the Interior Ministry. The motor blasts wounded two police officers and were heard on camera as President Ashraf Ghani was speaking at an Eid prayer ceremony at the Presidential Palace Mosque. The Afghanistan Azim Ausar Wali Milata the Louis Akhtar Mubarak Kiwa Akhtar Mubarak Shah. The attack came two days after Ghani had declared a conditional ceasefire with the Taliban. The Taliban insurgents, according to two senior commanders, have rejected the three month ceasefire offer and vowed to continue its attack against the government and its foreign allies. Earlier, President Ashraf Ghani congratulated the country's armed forces in Ghazni for their victory over Taliban insurgents in the strategically important city after clashes killed at least 150 soldiers and 95 civilians. The five-day Taliban siege of Ghazni East after Afghan officials declared that they had regained complete control of the city by killing the militants. Last week, in a brutal show, thousands of insurgents entered Ghazni after destroying checkpoints, killing dozens of Afghan soldiers and police officers, cutting communications and highways. According to Ghazni police, the terrorists had captured the government offices and police headquarters. The insurgents then roamed the city, destroying shops, forcing civilians to cook for them and using them as human shields during the clashes. A top official in Trump's administration said the U.S. has expressed concern over terrorist groups continuing to enjoy safe haven in Pakistan and is asking the country to do more against externally oriented extremist outfits. We have a report. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary Alice Wells told reporters that Pakistan has an important role to play in furthering stability in Afghanistan and the U.S. has expressed its concern over the fact that terrorist proxy groups continue to be able to enjoy safe haven in Pakistan. She said they were urging the government to do more to bring pressure to bear against these organizations, externally oriented terrorist groups. Wells was asked if the U.S. has seen any progress in its demand that Pakistan take action against terror groups like the Haqqani Network and Taliban. Pakistan has an important role to play in, um, in, in furthering stability in Afghanistan. We have expressed our concern over the fact that terrorist proxy groups continue to be able to uh, enjoy safe haven in Pakistan. We are urging the government to do uh, more uh, to bring pressure to bear against these organizations, uh, externally oriented uh, terrorist groups. And at a time when President Ghani has been so forward leaning, in putting forward a peace proposal that the international community has rallied around. 
Wells addressed a foreign press center video conference from Washington on U.S. policy in the Indian Ocean region, during which she previewed her upcoming travel to the Indian Ocean Conference hosted by the Indian Foundation in Hanoi on August 27 and 28. Well said the U.S. looks forward to working with the new government of Pakistan and welcomed the words of Prime Minister Imran Khan when he discussed the importance of having peace on both sides of Pakistan's borders. Uh, Pakistan obviously has a critical role to play in the stabilization of Afghanistan. We've encouraged Pakistan to take uh, stronger steps to ensure that the Taliban uh, either come to the negotiating table or expelled back into Afghanistan uh, rather than enjoy a safe haven outside of the country. Pakistan itself is uh, proving to be a heaven for them. And the USA is rightly perturbed over them because these people are not only affecting uh, Pakistan but they are affecting globally. So now US is putting more pressure, they have stopped their funding also. Pakistan has virtually got no option because uh, they are on the brink of collapse, they don't have any funds. While responding to questions on Afghanistan and the security situation in the region, Wells said Pakistan obviously has a critical role to play in the stabilization of Afghanistan. These terrorists are uh, main culprits who have made Pakistan to this brink and make them totally bankrupt. Because most of the funds which Pakistan received from USA, they were diverted to terrorists and further diverted to the terror operation. As a result, Pakistan got sanctions. But with Imran Khan coming to the power, we are hopeful, word is hopeful and USA also is hopeful that Imran Khan will do some action. Well said that Pakistan and Afghanistan have embarked over the last several months on an effort to improve the bilateral relationship with the negotiation of a solidarity document which the U.S. strongly supports. Uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan have uh, embarked over the last several months on an effort to improve their bilateral relationship through the negotiation of a solidarity document, which we strongly support. And I think we welcome the words of Prime Minister Imran Khan when he discussed the importance of having peace on both sides of, of Pakistan's borders. On President Donald Trump's South Asia strategy announced last year, well said the South Asia strategy obviously pointed to the role that India can and should play in supporting the stabilization of Afghanistan. We need to see Afghanistan stitched back into the region, and that, in, that includes both north-south trade as well as east-west trade. And we welcome the fact that India has stepped up um, and has evinced um, you know, this you know, commitment and, and enjoys a strategic relationship you know, with Afghanistan that does not have to come at the expense of any other country in the region. Just weeks after the Daud-led D company received a blow from a Thailand court, the London police managed to nab another close aide of the notorious gangster Daud Ibrahim, Jabir Moti, in a money laundering and drug case. Newsweek South Asia has a report. Jabir Moti, a key aide of notorious Indian gangster and wanted terrorist Daud Ibrahim, was arrested by British police at the Hilton Hotel in London. Moti, who was managing Dawood's investment in the UK, UAE and other countries, was arrested on drug-related charges. One thing is that the Pakistani national is the one who is living in Karachi. His father was a hero in Karachi. He was a hero in the first place in the hero. He was a hero in Karachi. 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 सोने का काम करते हैं उनको अशरफी लगा लेते हैं साथ में जो डायमंड्स का काम करते हैं वो मोती लगा लेते हैं साथ में तो काफ़ी पैसे वाली फैमिली को बिलोंग करने वाला आदमी है वो कोई छोटा मोटा क्रिमिनल किस्म का आदमी नहीं है मोती हु इज अ पाकिस्तानी नेशनल हैज बीन इन द यू के ऑन अ टेन ईयर वीजा दिस कम्स एज अ डिप्लोमेटिक विन फॉर इंडिया एज ए हैज बीन पुशिंग फॉर मोदी इज अरेस्ट फॉर ईयर्स Meanwhile, a newly updated list of financial sanctions released by the UK government earlier this week notes three known addresses of Dawood in Pakistan. Two number of work is done, like the name of Iqbal Mirchi, the Bhatti brother, Majid Bhatti, Iqbal Bhatti, Pakistan, Karachi, the smuggler. The money of all people in London, the money of the money, how to show the official record, how to show the property, how to show the property, 
टैक्स कितना भरना है कितना बचाना है तो ये सब काम जो है इन सब लोगों के लिए ये जबीर मोती किया करता था तो दाऊद अक्सर इंग्लैंड में जाता रहता था लंदन में सिटी के अंदर स्विस कॉटेज में उसका एक बंगलो भी था बहुत बढ़िया और उसके दो बंगले छोड़ के जावेद मियादाद का बंगला था Daoud Ibrahim is one of India's most wanted terrorists for his role in the 1993 Mumbai blast. During the hearing, Modi's counsel appealed to the judge to ban the media from the court over safety concern due to reports appearing in the Indian media. However, the appeal was turned down. Pakistan mein bhi wanted hai. Wo kuch African countries mein bhi wanted hai jahan pe wo underworld walon ka paisa lagata tha jahan drug trade ke sath uski involvement hai. तो अभी तक इतना हिंदुस्तान की एजेंसीज को और अंडर वर्ल्ड को इतना करीब से जानने के बाद हमने आज तक कभी जबीर मोती का नाम नहीं सुना था कि उसका किसी किस्म से अंडर वर्ल्ड से कोई लेना देना है या उसका कोई इनसे बिजनेस पार्टनरशिप है तो ये एक किस्म का एक क्रिमिनल लोगों का या दो नंबर के लोगों का चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट है और कोई इससे बड़ी कोई हमारी डिप्लोमेटिक उपलब्धि नहीं है कि उसको इंग्लैंड की पुलिस ने रोक लिया उपलब्धि मैं तब मानूंगा जब उसको सक्सेसफुली हिंदुस्तान वापस लेके आएंगे तो उस उपलब्धि मानी जा सकती Jabir Mohti admitted that Dawood Ibrahim was in Pakistan's Karachi city. The UK police will also investigate the funds that are managed by Jabir Mohti to understand whether the funds are used for certain terror activities that come out from Pakistan. England ki police ka jo London ki jo metropolitan police hai ye unke liye ek challenge hai. Main is baat se sahmat hu ki kahin na kahin unko ye lagta hoga ki ye aadmi जो पाकिस्तान से जो मिलिटेंट ग्रुप्स जो यूके में जो एक्टिव हो रहे हैं उनकी फंडिंग में कहीं इसका हाथ हो सकता है उस चक्कर में मेट्रोपॉलिटन पुलिस ने इसको पकड़ा होगा Dawood's earnings from this business and other unlawful activities like illegal arm business, narcotic trade, extortion rackets and real estate business are used for financing terrorists to carry out anti-India operations. पाकिस्तान हम सबको मालूम है कि एक वन रिलीजन नेशन है और वहाँ पे कट्टरवादी फोर्स जो है वो बहुत एक्टिव हैं और उनके साथ सरकारी मशीनरी भी है आर्मी का आईएसआई की भी छतर छाया उनके ऊपर है तो काफ़ी सारे इनके सेल जो हैं वो इंग्लैंड में काम करते हैं Of late Jabir was also looking for dual nationality status in Barbados and Antigua and the Dominican Republic and a permanent resident status in Hungary. And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@ani.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.